Sir Sire, the Lady Boss, the Boss of All Bosses, the King of Queens. We are tapped in, tuned in. It's ITLT TV TV podcast. We are in my home city, Columbus, Ohio, land of the Buckeyes. Go Bucks! And uh, I got some special, amazing guests appearing on the show tonight. I got King Thunder. We're gonna catch up with him. We're gonna see what's popping in his lane. You know, he done bought the thunder, the lightning, and the rain. This is your girl, Sir Sire TV. We tapped in with Kush Malone tonight. We got Money and Memories Entertainment in this bitch tonight. As I said, we got King Thunder. And we got Slumlords. Holla at your girl. Hi. Them, Mr. Gorilla, Sir Sire. The Lady Boss, the King of Queens, the Boss of All Bosses. You are tapped in, tuned in, turned on to ITLT TV. Thank you for tuning in to my special guest, Miss Cassandra Malone. Duh, it's Kush. You see the information. Tap in, turn Tap on time. In. Like, subscribe, share. My fuck. Don't just be a spectator and a voyeur with your dick in your hand, your pussy in your hand. Like, subscribe, share. Okay? Please and And me. coming to the stage next, we got Mr. J. Brock. Okay, we up in this bitch. Turn up. What up, young girl? This is your gorilla, Sir Side Lady, boss, the boss of all bosses, the king of queens. We are here today, and yes, it's God Body. You are tuned in, tapped in, turned on to ITLT TV TV podcast. <laughs> ITLT TV, ITLT TV, ITLT TV. Yeah, all that. Because I fucked up all that. All and that. I'm back home. I'm on my throne, as you can see, in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. <laughs> And I'm here with a great friend of mine, a longtime fave, Mr. Motherfucking Jay Brock, Mr. Brock, Mr. Columbus Funny Man, Mr. They Hating But Trying to Fake and Escaping. How are you, my ninja? I am prophylactic. I'm prophylactic. to be here, you feel me? You Super know? gay. Yeah. But I am, you know, they don't even know about that. They don't know, but that's some <laughs> insider that's shit. Inside joke, Cause you know, he's, he's an artist. I met him as an artist years ago, probably like still a decade. Artist, still an artist, and he's still violation. an artist. Because creativity is artistry, Never so you're an artist. Never Dot com. Mm -hmm. So, he was a hip hop artist when I met him. The way when he went from hip hop to comedy. And I was shocked and I said, you know, what made you decide to do comedy? Um, well, like I said, creativity never dies. Um, creative, I have a creative mind and it's always working. Uh, what made me move from, you know saying, doing hip-hop to comedy, one, hip-hop expensive as fuck. Let's start there. Balling back. <laughs> you feel me? Like, when, like, a bunch of people get paid. The producer gets paid, the engineer gets paid, the marketing gets paid, before the artist ever sees a dime. With comedy, all I need is me and a microphone. And, all I need is one mic like nine. Yeah. And then, I mean, honestly, to tell you the truth, like, you spend all that money, and to make money to actually see a return on your investment, you have to say things and do things that are detrimental, detrimental to our people. Yeah. And me, morally, I just could not do it anymore. Okay. Like, so, you can make music for yourself. Yeah. And that's positive and right. shit like that. It's not but you ain't going to make no money off right. that shit. <laughs> that's true. And I resonate with that. And so, he made a lot of dope music for the masses, for himself, for our energy. But what was the deciding factor to make you go comedy? Um, I mean, it's kind of like, like, I, I always compare it to, like, rap was like that, that bad chick in high school that you just had to have, and I just kept putting into, putting into, putting into, and not getting as much out of, and then it was like, comedy was like that best friend that was always there for me, yeah, you know, outlet. I've always been funny, and then, I mean, let's, let's go ahead and talk about it, Live PD, okay. you know what I'm saying, I ended up on national TV, on Live PD, Lightweight went viral, and it was just like, well, shit, hell, if I can make people laugh without even trying. Okay, let me, because y'all motherfuckers that ain't even tuned in, turned on, tapped in. He said Live PD. Live PD, that's Columbus Police Department, right? No, Live PD was a show, on, it's off the air now. It was it's a off show air. on A and E. A and E. Where they cable, cable all over the country, and they yes. happen to have 
a season where they were here in Franklin County, Columbus, Ohio. Yes, like 48 hours. Yeah. Or, because I was watching that shit in Buckeye, Arizona, and I seen this nigga on the show. A lot of people seen it. Tell us about, a lot of people seen it and set this nigga off. Now, imagine me, I'm in Arizona by way of Ohio. I'm with my blunts up, with my motherfucking, it wouldn't even do say back then. And I see this nigga on TV, not internet, but he's on TV, my nigga. Cable. Television. Cable television. And he's having a domestic dispute with a buckethead bitch. Tell us about the dispute. I'm sorry, not buckethead bitch. Let me not I support the queens, but the way it was presented on television. Yeah. Actually, they didn't present her at all. They put right. the, they immediately put it the cameras the on me story. as soon as they right. see me. Yeah. You know, a situation happened. You know, things happen in relationships. I got a smart mouth. You know, um, things got a little bit physical, not on my end. Uh, so this ain't my first rodeo. So I called for a courtesy transport because I was inebriated right. under the, you know, under the influence of alcohol, just alcohol, and some alcohol, just alcohol, and some alcohol, just alcohol, and. Out of control, I called me a courtesy transport. Get the heck up out of there before I had to put her stupid ass through a wall. And then I'm all kind of bitch ass niggas for putting my hands on a woman and shit. And I didn't even, you know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know aggressive. Single dad to single parent. Yes, I am. And guys respect the single black fathers and the single black mothers. Mm -hmm. And so he made the right decision on national TV. But media is the most effective thing I America did not initially do that to be on national television. Right. I just wanted he to get out know. of Dodge. And then next thing I know was TV cameras yeah, in my period. face. Mm. <laughs> and so I called him like, nigga, you on TV? What the fuck is you doing? Multiple people called. Yeah, right period. I was still in, I was getting these calls. How did you handle that? I mean, yeah, I was getting these. At the time, I didn't know what to do with it. Because, well, cause one, this nice. is my life. It wasn't yeah. like... It was something that I did to go viral. This is like my real life, something yeah. that I'm really going through that I don't want. Like, this was the week before Thanksgiving. Like, me and, we was in a relationship together. Like, me and her had to sit in front of my parents and my grandmother on Thanksgiving dinner after we done, after we done acted a fool and ended up on national okay, on television. National television. Oh, H-I-O. Yeah, put it down for the map. So, you know what I'm saying? It was so big and went, you know what I'm saying? It went so viral. And, People were cracking up at it and it was just like, yo, that was just me just talking, just being in the moment and just being shocked at And y'all, the link, you see the link scroll into this right now. You give us permission to share this link. Oh uh, yeah, I mean to share this footage. I, I mean at least you asked for permission. A lot of people they didn't A and E didn't even make me sign up in yeah. one minute I was in the situation, the next minute it was on TV and people nice. were calling. And so guys, the know only that check. entertainment is 90% business and 10% show. Okay? Mm. It's stay on top of your business. He stayed on top of his business for years as an artist, as an entrepreneur, as a truck driver, as a comedian. You know, and in artistry, you transition, you become that butterfly. You migrate. And you need to learn that in hip hop. Hip hop, we are a culture. I support this man's talent, his effort, his ventures, because I've seen him grow. And I'm all about growth and development. And one thing that I want to touch on, because you know, I tell the TV interview, we are about real life, real moments in this lifetime. He is a single father. Tell us how single parenting affects your entertainment life. Um, the way, I mean, it's just, I mean, I have to make concessions. Like, I can't do as much as I want to do, but I do what I need to do. Yeah. Um, luckily, like, I'm not in a situation where I have a small child. My son just turned 12. Um, you know, even though it's it's me and him, I have a strong support system with my family. Like, they're supportive of what I'm doing. Support, with support, support. Yeah, so they help me out, you know. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, when I have to, you know, take trips out of town for bookings that I get, like, they step up, help it's, out. I'm sorry, speaking of out of town, are your family stepping up and helping out for this next show? Uh, yes, Saturday when I go to Chicago, yes. Where are you going? I'll be at the SLR bar in Harvey, Illinois. It's basically on the south side of Chicago. Um, Saturday, what is that, the 14th of August? I, I don't so. know. Yeah, it is the 14th. What's the day? Yeah, yeah it's I'm Friday like, the 13th. Uh, it's well, Friday the 13th. What's the day? I wasn't going to say it. Yeah. yeah, it's Saturday the 14th. So, so. Right. 
period. But it, it, shout out to Slum Lords behind the scenes. Shout out to Judge Kush behind the scenes. Yeah, keeping us on point. You know. On point. So yeah, the fam, the fam helps out, you know, um, when they need to. But you know, um, I enjoy my family helping out, but at the end of the day, they weren't in the bedroom, you know what I'm saying, you know, getting busy when this when my son was created. So, so responsibility. it's my responsibility um, to make sure that, you know, everything's taken care of and everything's paid for and, you know, his schooling and things like that. So that's kind of Good dad alert. Yeah. Good dad alert for you bad bitches do not apply. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this skin. This is, I, I, I thought the skin was really funny. It's like side nigga shit. Side nigga you know, problems. Side nigga problems. What I, the, do. I want you to eat it, daddy. You want me what? I want you to eat this pussy, daddy. Why are you being dumb? First of all, don't disrespect me like that. Ain't nobody acting dumb. Secondly, I ain't in the business of chewing on no cat, but chicks that got boyfriends. Like, first of all, that's a violation of the side nigga code. And secondly, that's just unsanitary. So what you trying to call me a nasty bitch? You know what? I'm just about to go. Oh, no, 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 no. It ain't even like that. But come on, come on, sit down, sit down, sit down. But do you really think that it's right? That I should be putting my mouth on you when you got a boyfriend that you be fucking wrong and shit? See, this is how much you know. Me and all my boyfriends use condoms. You just say boyfriends? Every time? Yes, every time, nigga. You know what? I ain't got time for this. I'm about to just go. No, no, come on, babe. Don't go, don't go. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. See now, I done got you this nice ass room. I done bought you this liquor. Why you want to ruin a perfectly good evening over semantics? Well, you know what you gotta do then. Ah, shit. Take your pictures off. A few moments later. Oh, mm, okay. Ugh. Ugh. Oh. What's wrong? Why you stop? Virginity to somebody else's girlfriend. Okay, I did not damn. choose this side nigga life. The side nigga okay. life chose me. It's side niggas winning. Yeah. It's side niggas winning. Cause my homeboy Stick High got a song called Side Niggas Is Winning. Side Niggas Is Winning. Um, it's not no side niggas are not winning. At the end of the because at the because at the end of the day, what you really want in life is a partner, yes. companionship. Yes. Um, iron sharp is iron. Yeah. Somebody to, you know, Spring. make you better while you make them better. Like, I mean, the side nigga life is fun, but I wouldn't mess around and be that old nigga in the yeah. club talking about, hey, hey, hey. Hey, with a whole right. bunch of with a whole bunch Side of keys, nigga turning with a whole bunch daddy. of keys, like yeah, 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 yeah. I already know I'm a sugar daddy in training, okay? No. <laughs> sugar daddy, I already know that. That's that is where I'm going to end up being, like yeah, girl, go ahead and okay. go ahead, yeah, go ahead, pop that trunk right there, man. I got something okay. in there for okay. you, a couple bitch, bags. Bitch, over making exactly. Work. Hey, wow. Hey, okay. hey, you gonna put me in the picture too? I'm the one paying for all this food and stuff <laughs> that you're posting on social media right now. You know. I'm gonna be the perfect sugar daddy. Let me get my Snapchat shot. Exactly. Shot. Sure. As, long as, as long as they making hymns and Cialis, I'm gonna be out here slinging it till I can't sling it no more. Hey, you know what? He a comedian. I'm dead <laughs> ass though. <laughs> dead ass. And that's what I was gonna move to next. Mm -hmm. Dead ass. I know you, you travel the world. Yes. You got shows, you got shows in California, Texas, yes. Chicago, all these places that you stayed in. What are you enjoying the groupie life, or would you prefer the settled married life? Well, well, one, I don't. Well, one, let's start start here. Like a, a big misconception about me is that I I really don't indulge in groupies. 
Like, I'm all of my ex's favorite ex. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Because this nigga was, before he became a comedian, he was super bogey. He had mad bitches at his shows. Penny throwing, West Virginia. Shout out to Slumlord Studios. These niggas know. It, it, was, was, it, was, part, it, was, it was It was an act, though. You know, it was a circus. Like, I was like a... A pimped out Lady Gaga. It was like a, a whole circus around to get people interested. I tell you too. Yes, but um, pimped out Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah that's kind of yeah. You know how she had a whole circus around her. Yeah. I was doing that, but it was like with hoes and shit. Yeah. Then, but it was more, you know, um, like one thing about me is like I'm all of my ex's favorite ex. So even if I break up with somebody, like they'll let me hold some coochie till I get back on my feet. Coochie you know I mean? coupons. Yeah. Okay. This is my real life. Though. This is how I actually do It's that. real life. Um, but yes, if, if I had my choice, if it was my choice and I had that person that was there for me, I would much rather choose that over any, because all of that, all of that, you know, casual sex is fleeting, you know? Yeah. I feel good in the moment. Mm -hmm. And then not to mention, you know, you got to protect yourself mm -hmm. because not only, from, yourself. not only from STDs, but STI. when you have yeah, STI, but when you spiritually transmitted disease, yes. spiritually transmitted it, demons, because it's an exchange, it's yeah. an exchange of, of your energy. soul and energy, Absolutely. and your soul with another yes. person, and then you know what I'm saying, the demons that they made not even that's half of them. They're now having sex with 20 people. Exactly, and their they demons got all yeah. yes. and, and now they're in. fragmenting and compartmentalizing mm -hmm. your energy. Because yep. you don't accept that these entities and demons that you didn't, even, that know you about. didn't even know about exactly. down to the people. Yes. Hey, sex is precious and sacred. Love your body, self-care, self-love, above all. Yes. Honey, like all the bling, all the rings, all the money, that ain't shit. Love yourself first because you're first a God body, first and foremost. And what I love about comedy is it can make you laugh, it can make you think. It can make you cry. It could check you because comedians tell the unadulterated raw truth, yes. like Richard Pryor. Like, anyway, who inspired you in the world of comedy? Who I did mean, that for you? I mean, honestly, I mean, I could go with any of the greats, but honestly, my grandfather was the funniest man I ever okay. met. Okay, what's your grandfather's name? Uh, Shout Porter out. Eugene Robinson. Okay, um, Mr. Robinson, Porter Eugene yes, Robinson. Yes, yes, he's the funniest man I ever known in my in my life. Uh, my uncle. Porter. Like I just come from a funny family. Okay. Like my dad is hilarious. Like you know, my mom, my grandma, like everybody. I just come from a funny family, and I get more of my information. But of course, you know, what I'm saying I watch the greats: Richard Pryor, Bernie Mac, Eddie Murphy, Dave Chappelle, uh, Kevin Hart, uh, Mike Epps is one of my favorites. Um, and then like the guys that I'm meeting now, like. Martini Harris, Mark Gregory, who was Dick Gregory's nephew, who's yeah. another rest in peace, Dick yeah, Gregory. Yeah, who's another one of Legend. my big influences, you know. And Dick Gregory is on a level of Dr. Sebi in another realm, like yes. political consciousness mm -hmm. and science. But I don't want to go too deep because I want to stay focused on you. Okay. When he transitioned from hip hop to comedy, it's a lot of up and coming talent that hit me up. Period. And I have this artist, shout out to her, she couldn't stay for her interview tonight, but shout out to Louise. Shout out Wizzy. I Yes, yeah, shout out Wizzy. I had him take her under his wing when she wanted to get into comedy. Comedy and entertainment in any effort is not as easy as it looks. At all. How do you make it look so effortless? Um, it's a lot of hard work that goes in. Um, when I first, especially like when I first started, um, I would, like, people perform at clubs, and there's like, especially now that everything's opened up, there's a, here in Columbus, there's an open mic every day of the week. And people will perform the same jokes at all the shows and all the open mics and stuff like that. But when I first started, I wanted to, you know what I'm saying, I wanted, like, anything that I want to do, I come from hip hop, I want to be the best, I want to be the So I just kept coming up with new material, new material, new material all the time. That, which led to me filming and having an hour worth of, like funny material right. that I then turned into the comedy special that I shot Memorial Day weekend at Shout Scully's. Shout out to Columbus, Ohio shooting comedy specials weekend yeah. Memorial at Scully's being. Sold out. And sold it out. And sold out. Yep, and then I made, like, I had a couple people open up for me, didn't make them sell any tickets. I sold every single okay, ticket. Okay, possible. Yes. There's more to being a promoter than just being able to Don't get Don't be a, a janky promoter. 
promoter. Yeah, there's, there's, there's more to being a promoter than getting, getting, a, getting a building and getting a flyer made. There's yeah. more to being a promoter than that. So I promoted myself, you know what I'm saying? It was the, okay, the first. Okay, so I just want to speak on me knowing him from the backside. When he was in hip hop, as his transition into a hip hop entrepreneur, into a comedian entrepreneur, a comedic entrepreneur, when I, I hear you're putting in the work, I see you putting in the work, I see the groupies, I see the life struggle, I see the hard work, I see the single parents. Where do you go to find peace in the nucleus with dealing with all that? It's that stage. No matter, no matter, no matter what's going on, when, the, when they call my name and the music goes on, I could be in a total frenzy. But once I hear hear my name and I get that microphone, let me in my ask head, you this: Does when they used to introduce your name before you went out to perform as a hip hop artist, is it the same feel that you get as when they introduce your name when you go out to promote or perform as a comedian? Well, no, because as a comedian, I'm giving you my raw, unadulterated self. I'm being transparent. I'm being um, vulnerable. Okay. I'm telling you exactly how I feel, what I feel, things that I go through. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually being me. Like, before I even get to the rap show, I didn't smoke some lunch, drank some Henny. You know what I'm saying? I got my shades on. I'm getting my persona. Yeah. You know, which is which my persona was an extension of myself. Yeah, but comedy yeah. is me. Yeah. In everything that I go through, all my scars. All my failures, all my triumphs, everything. And like it's my therapy. Pop, it's his therapy. And I, I, I commend you, I pass off round of applause. What I wanna say is you've been in hip hop. We know entertainment industry. It's all under the same umbrella. Yes. But in this entertainment industry, you know, hip hop gives you haters. Have you found haters in the comedy industry since you've become a comedian? You know, if you ain't got, got no haters, haters you ain't popping. If you, know, you ain't got no haters, haters you ain't, ain't popping. I mean, you're going to have, I mean, in anything that you do where, you know what I'm saying, money's involved, people's livelihoods involved, people's dreams are involved. If they see you doing something and you're doing it faster and better than they're doing it and they're not quite doing it at the level, of course, you know what I'm saying, jealousy seeps in. And, and it's, 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 I mean, it's in anything. I mean, you have, I mean, you have jealousy at your job. You know what I'm saying? That's at your nine to five. Any job, at exactly. any place where two human beings are congregating. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, of course, you have it in comedy. Uh, me, I just put my blinders on and just mind my business. Because I think, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm willing to work with anybody. I'm cordial with anybody. Um, but at the end of the day, comedy is solo sport. When you get up there and you're telling them jokes, you up there by yourself. And the only battle you have is between you and the crowd. You're your only competition. Yeah. You and what you present and represent. Yeah. So I'm going to conclude with this, Mr. J. Brock, Mr. Funny Man, one of my favorite artists. Because artists, we can do many things, acting, yeah. write, comedy, Improv, whatever, because God's given us a gift. And your gift shines, your light shines in your entertainment life, in your regular life, and what you pursue. What can we look forward to? ITLT TV listeners, subscribers, naysayers, glancers, what can they look forward to from you? Um, well, one, uh, the I Can't Make This Shit Up comedy special, the first. Uh, project put out by my company, Brock Solid Productions. Brock Solid. You know, everything's official. Um, that's the first thing they can be looking at for that in the fall of 2021. Um, we're rolling into the final. Uh, that's final. coming up. Yeah. So it's happening. Yeah, we're we're rolling into like the final, you know, editing processes and things like that. Um, hella content, bunch of content. Bunch of content. Content uh, is everything. Yeah, skits. Check out his Instagram right now, guys. You're gonna see these skits where he got with side nigga problems. Like I almost pissed on myself when I seen it. I called this nigga up like, we gotta do the interview. Yes. What the fuck is you on, nigga? You, yeah. you elevated next level shit. Yeah. I'm so, so proud of you. More skits um, across all social media platforms: uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat. Um, we got a podcast He's coming up. Yeah, we got a, yeah, we got a podcast coming up. Let me ask you this: You got all these irons in the fire. You're making all these moves, and we know in the game it's military silence to execute. What 
we're just gonna go three years from now. Mm -hmm. Three years from now, where's J Rock? Uh, three now, years from now, J Rock's on tour in the industry, moving around the media, influencer. Um, shoot, uh, gonna have a, yeah, a trucking business and a restaurant. Just, uh, just an all overall, just entrepreneur like. Controlling my body, so it's something so big. Thoughts I say yes, so when he say he won't, my body's still on his body. All over my water, body. he like to swim. I'ma make some way for him. I'ma spend a day on him, dry the boat and smoke with him. He gon' hit it like a lick, like the center that he is.